36 years of basketball knowledge and life skills. Your host, Coach Goins, focuses on today's topics on and off the court, helping players and coaches achieve their goals. So get ready for another fast break episode of Basketball More Than a Game with your host, Coach Goins. Hey, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it's that time of day. It is for Sunday conversation, and I'm your host, Coach Goins. Listen, as we always say, make sure you got your sneakers on, you got them laced up tight. You know, it is it is December. Can you believe it? December 2017, and you know what? We are back on the grind. So good to be home. You know, that's what's, uh, that's what's so special about this week's episode. I am home. I'm in the great Commonwealth of Virginia, and it's just great, great to be home and be back in the studio and not on the road. You know, because sometimes it, uh, on the grind, it just kind of wears you down. But that's all right. It's all good. And I'm just so happy uh, that uh, my main man, uh, the best co-host in the nation. You know, some people talk about Stephen Smith. Some people talk about um, uh, Shannon Sharp. I've got none other than Coach Mike Quick. Coach Quick, welcome to Basketball More in the Game. Glad to be here, Coach Goins. How are you? Oh, man, you know how it is. It's that time of month, man. It's December, and I know you loaded for bear. Uh, folks, I'm telling you right now, before we get into the heart and soul of this uh, podcast today, Coach Quick hit me up earlier today uh, and said that he was prepared you know, on all cylinders. So I'm telling you now, even before we get crunk, he's going to be bringing it to you. Before we do, let's make sure we pay the bill so Coach Quick and Coach Goins can stay on this podcast. And we just like to thank uh, none other than – uh, our title sponsor, Mr. Curtis Jackson, your broker agent and benefits coordinator. So for your insurance needs, make sure you reach out to Curtis because I tell you what, you cannot find a finer gentleman in this business and that will tell you, number one, up and honest, what you need to do to prepare now and also for your loved ones when that uh, time comes and you do not want to be caught uh, without being prepared as it relates uh, to yourself and as your loved one. So you can reach him at area code 919-614-5796. And again, that's Mr. Curtis Jackson. And he is his office is in Creedmoor, North Carolina. Uh, please reach out and give him a call. And when you do give him a call, tell him he certainly appreciate all his time and efforts and his and staff and their continued support to basketball more in the game. Because without great uh, sponsors as uh, Mr. Jackson, it would be very hard for Coach Quick and I to do what we do. And that's just to try to reach the mashes uh, out on the show. Uh, so what's that, Coach Quick? You know what? I got I got another good little update for you there, sir. We have uh, picked up another. We've picked up another country uh, in Africa. Uh, so now we're in Ghana, Africa. Uh, so that is uh, that's quite uh, quite exciting uh, to be in. Uh, that's that, that makes our actually our second. Uh, stop off in Africa so it's just so good that uh, we're continuing to span the globe and, and reach the folks and reach the masses so with that like I said Coach Quick has done some homework so you know what I'm going to do I'm going to jump over here uh, on the passenger side and Co- Coach Quick is going to run a, run this show tonight and he's going to be taking the lead so as always the first part of the podcast is the fast break so I'm going to kick that out let pass over to Coach Quick and you got it Coach Yes, sir. Um, Coach Goins, I just wanted to start the show off this week um, by saying, first and foremost, um, prayers continuously with the Cable family, you as well. Um, and as Coach Jeff Cable is going on home to be with the good Lord, but just wanted to say, God bless um, you and your family and um, just get continuous prayers to you all. Um, also, I wanted to start the show, um, the show out with college football with the playoffs um, coming up soon upon us. Um, The four playoff teams, the Clemson Tigers are the number one seed, number two seed, the Oklahoma Sooners, number three, the Georgia Bulldogs, and ladies and gentlemen, the number four seed, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Um, They got into the playoff picture for the fourth straight year. Um, uh, Also, though, I think it's a little bit of controversy behind that. Coach Goins, let me um, ask you your take on that, on the four teams in the playoffs. Well, you know what? I appreciate you uh, spanning the globe and making sure that we're touching uh, uh, such a valuable sport as college football. But uh, you know what? When I really, when I look at it, you know, I, I'm definitely in the grant so with Alabama being in. You know, some people say Ohio State should have got should have got the nod. But, you know, when you look in that, you know, what you just said in, in the stat line in reference to Alabama, you know, it, some people may say they didn't deserve, but, you know, they are a powerhouse. And that's why I little struggle with a little bit of uh, college football and, and, you know, how they play. And, you know, or how, you know they say strength, you know, strength of schedule or, you know, they go out and they'll, they'll beat teams, you know, by you know, 30 and 40 points. But you know, I think uh, I think the committee nailed it. Uh, I think, uh, um, all honesty, 
I think it'll be Clemson and uh, Oklahoma. Uh, you hadn't asked me that question, so I'm going to kind of get out in front of it. And, and I'll tell you what, I don't know what goes on down in Death Valley, but that old Dabo Swinney, he has a, he has a program. Uh, I appreciate uh, what he does for that uh, institution. I appreciate uh, his you know, focus uh, on with his players. But most importantly, uh, Coach, uh, I think you uh, way to start to show off and just, you know, throwing us right in the thick of things. But, you know, again, I agree with the four that's in there, but I think you will have to come through Clemson in order to win that thing. Hey, I agree with that, Coach Gorn, but I sort of disagree with the fourth team. Um, not saying Alabama's not deserving, not at all, but Ohio State, when you beat um, two top four teams and one of them being an undefeated team in the conference championship game in Wisconsin, and you also beat a team in the top 12, you know, I, you're going by the one real, and it, uh, it was a real bad loss to Iowa. You, anytime you lose 55 to 21, but um, I just sort of feel that Ohio State should have been in. Um, and here's my take on that. I wish the playoffs would expand to eight teams, um, but I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for Clemson. There's a reason behind that as well, you know, but I think it will be Clemson and Oklahoma, and I'm going with Clemson. You know, a lot of people don't know that um, Clemson's starting quarterback, Kelly Bryant, you know, he, he's been battling Crohn's disease. For, since about 2012. Wow. And a lot of people may not know what Crohn's disease is, so I just wanted to touch a little bit on that if that's okay. With yes, sir. Yes, so sir. On. Let's enlighten them. Crohn's disease, um, it, it, it teaches Kelly Bryant how to handle adversity and injuries. He has battled a concussion and lower ankle injury throughout this season, but Crohn's disease has helped him battle through, through the nagging little injuries. Crohn's disease belongs to a group of conditions known as inflammatory bowel diseases, better known as IBD. Crohn's is a chronic impl inflammatory condition of the gastrointestinal tract. In February 2014, Bryant was hospitalized with stomach pains that he thought were related to his Crohn's meds. Come to find out he needed surgery to remove an infection and a second surgery to repair a small intestine. After months in recovery, Bryant found himself weighing 167 pounds, wow. 40 pounds lighter than his playing weight the previous season. I'm pulling for this kid, you know, because as, as an individual who, who is married to um, someone who's lived with Crohn's disease since the year 2000, I know what this kid is going through. It takes a lot of toughness and fortitude, intestinal fortitude, to be able to do what he's done. And, you know, he states sometimes there's, he still has stomach pains, but he doesn't let it um, stop him. He keeps going. By the grace of God, this kid, he, he gets it, and he, and he has a whole lot of heart. And just that alone has me pulling for Kelly Bryant and the Clemson Tigers to win this thing. I'm a Dabo Swinney fan. I personally think he's the, um, he's the top college football coach in America today. I think he's overtaking Urban Meyer and, and Nick Saban. I think Dabo Sweeney's got something special brewing down at Clemson, South Carolina. You know what? Without a shadow of a doubt, man. You know what? And let's kind of, I want to kind of touch back on the whole playoff scene again. You know, what would be, what would be cool if they would allow uh, Ohio State and Alabama to play and then the winner rolls in? Right. You know I mean? would love that. It's just yes, to right. say, okay, you know what? Let's, uh, uh, like I always tell people, you know, check your, check your guns at the door, put 50 cent on the counter, and let's play this game. And uh, do that, and then let the guys, you know, and then you know, get you know, play that game, give them a couple of weeks off, and then or a week off, uh, and, and that's another thing that you know, I really, I, you know, why are we waiting all the way to uh, like New Year's Day, you know, and it's just like you know, the NFL, you, you know, used to be two weeks before the Super Bowl or three weeks, and and they shorten that window down, and and, and that's what uh, that's what to me, that's what's so important. That we be able to get in and get uh, get the rocking and rolling, and not be you know tied up with a whole bunch of uh, rigmarole. But no, you know what, Mike? I appreciate that research on that, and, and you're exactly right. When a kid gets out there and the kid's going through a lot of stuff, you know, there's nothing there's nothing nicer uh, than getting on that guy's bandwagon because of what the struggles that he's dealing with off the court, or off the field. But he's able to turn around and put those things into play. Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw this thing back over to uh, Coach Quick. But, yeah, that, that's, that's a great question, great research, and I, I feel wholeheartedly. I mean, when a, when a young player is dealing with what he's dealing with and he's able to put it together and bring it every day on the football field, you know, how, how can you not get in behind him? So, uh, Clemson Tigers all the way.
Yes, sir. All right, babe, before we move on from college football, I just wanted to touch on the, um, the Heisman Trophy finalists this weekend, Baker Mayfield out of Oklahoma, Lamar Jackson out of the University of Louisville, and Bryce Love out of Stanford. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking Baker Mayfield is going to win the Heisman, but I'm certainly pulling for Bryce Love because of the North Carolina ties. Um, so, what's your take? Who you got winning the Heisman? Coach, going? You know, I, I, I have to go ahead and uh, pull for uh, pull for the kid for Oklahoma. Uh, you know, just um, you know, he's had a great you know great career, and and, and that's a uh, that, that's something that he, I'll share this with you real quick. I remember as a kid, as a young young player playing in the yard, that's something that I wanted to win, uh, but I had no idea that you know linemen or big dudes never won. It was always running back or maybe receiver. Or a quarterback, and I uh, you know just what a what a great great tradition that that whole platform and the and the commercials with the, I mean it, it's it's a life changing um, it's a life changing award. You know those guys have to be careful. You know because sometimes uh, you know they they achieve that and win that award, and and then sometimes it kind of you know fizzles out. But you know I, my, my, I'm going to tip my hand to the uh, young man out of uh, Oklahoma. Yes, sir. He's he's had a heck of a heck of a career. He's a great great kid and I think he's going to put up big numbers in um, college football playoffs. I can't wait to see the games. Just looking forward to them. Okay, moving along to the National Football League. Um, Monday night's game. I know you got a lot of thoughts on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, <laughs> I do as well and um, I, you know, I just want to send my thoughts and prayers out to Mr. Shazer um, who had the injury on Monday night, um, the spinal injury. You know, my thoughts and prayers are with you and your family. Um, we, I bid you Godspeed and, and praying for a speedy recovery for you. You know what, Mike? And that was, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, and that, um, I'm glad you, you brought that up. Uh, that was probably the toughest game I've ever watched. As a fan, as a long time, as a uh, Pittsburgh Steelers fan all my life, uh, When to watch a play like that was very hard. Um, and even to continue to watch the game because it was times I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to shut it down and, and move on and, and do something else. But then part of me wanted to stay and see, you know, how we as a team, you know, would pull together, you know, through adversity. And, and you know, for the young folks that are listening, as well as the coaches that, you know, tune us in each week, you know, Coach Quick just, you know, he, he brought up a um, a great topic. It's something that uh, one, uh, you know, that players can, can learn that, you know, you got ha- you got to keep your head up. You, know, you can't, you cannot put, you can't drop your head. Um, you know, so you know, prayers to to Ryan and his entire family, and you know, just uh, we just you know wishing. You know, number one thing is, you know, I'm not worried about football. I just want the young man to be able to walk, uh, and that's my prayers. And then if if that all works out and he's there, wants to come back, fine. But if not, I just want his quality of life to uh, for him to to have that decision to be able to say if I want to play or, or I just want to move on. But yeah. All, all, you know, just kind of really, you know, looking at the full body of work. Uh, it's a tough game. Uh, as Ben said at the end of the game, it's AFC North. Uh, I'm very disappointed in uh, Juju uh, for standing over uh, after he hit the uh, the linebacker. Uh, I understand the play. It was a block. It was a great block. Um, but standing over him was a little bit much. And then, of course, uh, the young man that hit um, um, AB in the end zone, head shot. You know, there's no place in the game for that. But also, you know, that's the speed of the game. And it's one thing uh, if you're totally aiming for somebody's head. You know, then it's a, you know, then then do whatever you need to do. But you know, I, th- I think it needs to be disciplined during the game. And I know that was at the end of the game. So if it's end of the game, it should come. Here, here's my rule: if it's in, if it's under two minutes in the game, and that happens, you know, suspend the guy for the first half of the next game. You know, sitting out an entire game. You know, and, and I understand the NFL. You know, they, they're and I don't want to use the phrase gra- uh, grasping for straws as it relates uh, to the uh, concussion protocol because such a bad light is on uh, the NFL. It is a violent game, hands down. It is a violent, violent game. And when you have a man that's six four, six five, he's two hundred and some pounds, and he's running as fast as he can. I mean, it's a car accident. You know, I mean, that's all. It, it's it's two two human beings running together, and if somebody ducks right at the last second. You know, your head lines out. But, you know, it's, you know, you look over the course of the, that entire series, you know, there's been jaws broken. There's been guys hurt that can't play the next week. Uh, you know, the Ravens, you know, coming up, uh, that's a tough game, but there's no game, there's nothing like the Cincinnati uh, uh, Steelers game. So, again, I'm just glad, Mike, that uh, that we got out of there with a W. 
Uh, it wasn't it wasn't pretty, but you know through through the circumstances and they had the guys had to rally. Uh, I ha- hats off to them. If, if we would have lost, we would have lost because at the moment in time during that game, I really didn't care about football. You know, just to see somebody in in that you know that physical state, and then you could just tell he he was scared himself, uh, just because the way you know. Again, I'm not trying to speculate or saying what was on his mind, but just his reaction when he was down on the floor and and, and not feeling his his legs, uh, and the, and the things that ran through his mind. But I just appreciate the organization, appreciate uh, Coach Tomlin knows getting over to the uh, hospital, uh, spending some time. I know I was reading some reports today that he's still under some evaluation. But you know, do what you got to do in order to uh, to be able to get out of this thing and and let football where it, let let football stay where it needs to stay, and, and we'll just keep Ryan and his the entire family lifted up in prayer. So, Mike, I appreciate that uh, uh, bring, you, know, you bringing that up. Right, you know, it's just a time. Um, you know, sports is one thing; it's a beautiful thing. But um, whenever it comes to down to the value of life, sometimes you you have to just put sports aside and focus on uh, on the person and. Um, Ryan Shazer, he's a big-time athlete, big-time football player, but he's an even greater person. And um, also, you know, just to uh, run my mind back over the weekend, you know, a kid from South Carolina State University Ooh, sitting yeah. on the bench during the North Carolina State game, you know, his he actually stopped breathing, his heart stopped. Um, if it wasn't for someone being able to perform CPR, who knows what would have happened. But by the grace of God, the young man's doing fine now, and um, – uh, he's on the road to recovery, but as you said, um, thoughts and prayers continue to go out to um, Ryan Shazer and the young man from South Carolina State as well. You know, but, and um, why, why you why you there? Uh, we got um, we don't have any ties to the uh, young man at South Carolina State, but the uh, head coach at uh, South Carolina State used to be uh, Coach Bobby Collins, uh, who I went to high school with, a good friend of mine. Uh, used to be his uh, assistant coach at uh, Winston Salem State. Uh, before he took over the uh, took over the head coaching job, so that was a uh, you know that was one of the coaching grapevines uh, from you know down through uh, Coach Collins and be able to uh, branch off uh, and uh, and this young uh, this young coach uh, takes over South Carolina and then of course uh, you know as Coach Quick said you know it's such a you know playing the ball game and that happens and just uh, so again prayers go out to uh, that young man and that entire. Uh, basketball team as they continue to work down through that. Edit the whole, both of these things that uh, Coach Quick is bringing up tonight are life changing events. Uh, and again, it's it's not about basketball. It's not about football. It's about life. So again, Mike, uh, you you uh, you you definitely got it dialed in, and definitely appreciate you bringing these hot topics up. Yes, sir. Um, that's that's what I, we love to do here at basketball more than the game. And you know, like like you said, like you always say, it is more than a game. Sometimes, yeah, life factors in more than anything in the world. And um, that we just love bringing up those topics, the hot topics here on the show. Um, and a little bit back to football, you know, um, the NFL, you know, they're pretty much getting pretty close to, to playoffs, to the playoffs coming up. And um, I got, if the playoffs started today, you're looking at the division leaders in the NFC, uh, Minnesota, Philadelphia, New Orleans, and the Los Angeles Rams with the wild card participants being the Carolina Panthers, Seattle Seahawks. Um, AFC, division leaders, New England Patriots, Pittsburgh Steelers, Tennessee Titans, Kansas City Chiefs at 6-6. Six and six. Um, And the wild card, um, Jacksonville and Baltimore. Uh, Kansas City has been a big disappointment since early in the season. You know, I don't know what has happened, um, but they're just not playing up to their potential in my eyes. And, um... But if the playoffs started today, I, I think yeah, we'll be locked and loaded and ready to go. You know what? That's exactly right. And it's, it's still a lot. It's still a lot of dealing going on. And a lot of things is, is going to transpire. But you know, I, I call it that Andy Reid deal. It's almost kind of the you know a little bit of um, Buffalo Bills. They come in, the, you know, they start off one way, then all of a sudden uh, they're popping. But I will throw this out. Uh, one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the National Football League is Russell Wilson. What you know, about? The, the, I mean, I'm like, watch the game Sunday, and I'm just like, this guy is like almost a, a one-man band, if you will, on offense. He does have a couple targets, uh, but what just, I, you know, hats off a tremendous, tremendous talent. Uh, and we just appreciate uh, appreciate what he does, what he does off the field as well as what he does on the field. Just 100%. 
uh, total gentleman and just takes care of business on on the on the field. And you know, I really feel sorry for the coach at North Carolina State uh, that said, you know, basically he just he, he wasn't a, it wasn't his guy, you know. And it just uh, and then he transfers and then you know now he's he's doing what he's doing in the NFL, you know. And, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, uh, coach. You know, some coaches miss it. Some coaches just right. miss the talent, and it's right in front of them. But, um, you know, and that's another thing for you young players. You know, if that happens, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, Russell could have walked away from North Carolina State and says, okay, I'm not going to play football. I'm just going to play baseball. Uh, but he didn't. You know, he, he continued to move forward. So sometimes coaches and players may not see eye to eye. Uh, in, in certain situations, but again, just a tremendous, tremendous talent. And I'll wrap up by saying this: Go Steelers! Yes, sir. Okay, let's move right along on to the sport of college basketball. Oh, watch uh, out now! Watch out! Here we go. Yes, sir. <laughs> just wanted to give you a rundown of the top fifteen teams in America right now. Um, had some key losses this week. I touch bases on those as well. Uh, number one team in the land, the Duke Blue Devils. Um, Followed by the Kansas Jayhawks, Michigan State Spartans at number three, Villanova Wildcats at number four, um, the Florida Gators at number five, who lost to Florida State on Monday night, um, Wichita State, uh, the Shockers come in at number six, number seven, Texas A&M, who lost to Arizona last night, big win for Arizona, needed to get back on track in the worst way, um, number eight, Kentucky, Number nine, Notre Dame, who lost to Ball State at the buzzer last night. Now, a three-point shot at the buzzer. Get life of college basketball, anything can happen. Number 10, the Miami Hurricanes coming in at number 11, the North Carolina Tar Heels. Number 12, the Gonzaga Bulldogs, who lost to Villanova last night in the Jimmy B Classic. Uh, number 13, Xavier. Uh, number 14, Minnesota. And number 15, the Virginia Cavaliers, who lost to West Virginia on last night. So, you know, a lot of, you know, some early season losses for some of these teams, but it's just getting them prepared and getting them ready for the grind of conference play and the NCAA tournament on down the line. You know what? That was some uh... – that was some great games last night. Um, and I was, as I was kind of flipping through, and, and of course I was, you know, had to stop off and, and watch the Blue Devils just because, not because they were playing, but more, more importantly, uh, Jason Capel uh, was uh, he was commentating the game. You know, so I had an opportunity to watch the game with my mom, and of course, you know, she gets a kick out, and when they sh- um, kick out of when they, they show on the bench, and she sees. Uh, Jeff the third, and then she hears Jason's voice, and then and then see him, you know, at the end of the game wrap up. But you know that would that's right. I mean, you know, Virginia just right, just only I'm only just a few miles down the road from Charlottesville, and of course, great friends with Ralph Sampson. Uh, you know, in my opinion, uh, Coach Quick, uh, Virginia just doesn't score enough points. I know defense is defense. You know, defense can win games, but you got to be able to, you got to be able to put some buckets. Um, switching over to, to uh, your boys in uh, Chapel Thrill, I tell you what, uh, it can be a very, very dangerous team. Uh, I would not want to play them. Uh, and the only thing I think they're lacking, and unfortunately, uh, when I say unfortunately, if uh, Bradley would have stayed, uh, you guys uh, would be, you know, you would be a very solid team. You're a dangerous team just because of guard play. Uh, and anybody that follows basketball know the NCAA tournament is guard play. And when you've got solid guards, you know you can do a lot of things in the NCAA tournament. Uh, you know, but Carolina, uh, if uh, if Penson does what he's supposed to do, and Luke May plays within himself, to me he didn't he didn't do a good job of that uh, when they I think when they when they played Michigan State. Yes, sir. But when he came back and played Michigan, it seems like he struggles a little bit when he's playing up against a bigger big. Uh, and and you know I think uh, he's playing well. Uh, but I hope he's just not reading a lot of the newspapers when because you hear so much of the Kevin Love comparison. Uh, and to me, right. you know, to me it's a little it's a little different. Uh, he's not Kevin Love. He doesn't have that um, doesn't have that skill set yet. He he he's a player that's worked very hard on the off season. I think he again he is one of the most improved college basketball players. But as long as he plays within himself and realize that the people that are around him, uh, you know, and I I think the, the and some of the younger guys. Meaning the bigs, you know, kind of step their game up a little bit. To, uh, Chapel Hill, uh, the, the Hills can can be very, very close to that Final Four uh, in San Antonio. Of course, Tom Izzo is always going to put it on the court. You never got to worry about Iz. He's going to have it there. And, and when if they're not in the top four or five, uh, you know he he's scratching back to get it uh, to get it back. But I tell you what, 
a special, special talent is Marvin Bagley the third. I mean, I'm just like, I watched him last night, man, and I was just like, you know what, I've been so impressed, and I've been trying to watch every Duke game just because I know he's only going to be there for a season. You know, and, and that's where I try to tell people, you know, when that opportunity comes, you got to be able to dial it in uh, and, and get, ready to, to get ready to rock and roll. But also I don't want to uh, leave out uh, the Villanova Wildcats. I've always been a big fan of uh, Coach Jay Wright. I think he runs a great organization. He does a great job in Villanova, and they will be very, very dangerous. Uh, and it's a little bit too early right now to call the Final Four, but I will give you a little snapshot of it. Uh, I do think uh, Kansas, uh, Duke, Chapel Hill, and Michigan State will be in the Final Four. Uh, I don't think a mid-major can can handle those guys just because the the size of D- – Duke is huge. They are a huge, huge team. Uh, and and once those guards start clicking, and, and I didn't realize Trent Jr., uh, his dad was um, the Shaq of the Mac. Uh, and and he shot the ball really well last night, and, and so did um, you know your, your guard from Carolina Barry. He played really really well, but he just has to get you know a couple of the couple of the guards to come alongside with him in Chapel Hill to be there. But that's my early early final four. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, probably by by mid February show, but uh, I, I will say the Hills. Let's say I said the Hills, uh, Duke, Michigan State, and Kansas, and maybe looking in, maybe Villanova. But uh, I think college basketball is off to a great, great start. I know the uh, the, the Blue Devils travel to uh, Boston Saturday. Who does Carolina open up with? Uh, well, we play tonight against um, Western Carolina. Um... And then we're all for about the next 11 days before we travel to Tennessee on December 17th. Tennessee almost got us uh, last year in Chapel Hill. So going up there, it's going to be a tough, tough game as uh, Rick Barnes renews his rivalry with the North Carolina Tar Heels. Oh, so y'all play tonight. What time is that game tonight? Um, 7 o'clock on on the Regional Sports Network. Oh, Lord. So I know we, I may not get in here in VA if it's on Regional Sports Network. Just, well, it may be that just because of the, the, who, who they're playing. Yeah, you may be able to because um, it's supposed to be on, like, a lot of different channels. Uh, I, I've seen NBC, Fox Sports South. Um, a different, just, it's just saying Regional Sports. Network. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out and see uh, see if it's on there. But, uh, yeah, because actually – I'm going to go to uh, Liberty. Uh, Liberty University is playing Maryland Eastern Shore. Uh, Liberty's only like 57 miles from here, so I'm going to slide down to that game Friday night. Uh, then I've got a coach in the tournament Saturday to kind of fill in because one of the coaches is, is sick on the travel squad. So I've been in, you know trying to do some crash jamming at uh, some of the practice and get up to speed. And then Sunday I'll be down in Blacksburg at Virginia Tech. Uh, Virginia Tech plays uh, Maryland Eastern Shore. So I'll be uh, I'll be down. So it's 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 three days: Friday, Saturday, Sunday on the grind, uh, checking out some basketball. But I can't have my good friend uh, from uh, high school, Bobby Collins, uh, who's the head coach at Maryland Eastern Shore, come in the backyard uh, and not load up and uh, and go support him. So be making those uh, two trips uh, this uh, this weekend, and uh, just wanting to give him a shout out and, and best of luck because uh, he lost uh, basically four starters to injuries this year. So. He's, uh, he's he's got it holding together with a band aid, but if anybody can do it, Coach uh, Coach Collins is the man. Okay, all right, quick. So what's your what's your take on the fi- on your pre? Give me your, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Give me your preseason final four, or mid or early early. Give me your December final four. The favorites right now is is probably Duke, Michigan State, um, Kansas, Chapel Hill, Duke, Michigan State, and Villanova. But I I gotta stick my Tar Heels in there. Uh, <laughs> Because we're we're sliding under the radar right now, so um, I, my prediction is Duke, Michigan State, Carolina, Villanova. Um, but uh, like I said, I gave you my the favorites to get there first, then I gave you my prediction. Um, <laughs> no. But if our bigs come along, you know, I believe we're going to be fine. But the key to UNC's team is getting Cameron Johnson back, another shooter who can. Um, spread the court, and I, I actually think Roy should uh, uh, take a page out of Jay Wright's book this season. Um, we're going to have to go small an awful lot. Luke may play in the five, you know, just like he got to guard those big guys down low. They got to come out on the perimeter and guard him too. And um, he's definitely a much improved basketball player, 
And as you said earlier, you know, just don't don't drink the Kool Aid. Keep putting in the work. Don't don't read the papers. What everybody's saying about Kevin Love, talking about potential na- national player of the year. Just keep working. Right. Keep grinding as exactly. you've done every summer. Right, that's exactly right. You know, couldn't couldn't say it any any finer than uh, what Coach Quick just dialed up because that you know that's what it's about. It's about hard work and. Uh, I talked about that on the uh, on the show I did uh, for Ralph uh, Sampson the other night, and that was the title of uh, my t- uh, ten minute segment was hard work, and that's what you got to do. I mean, it, there's a reason why, and I'm not taking anything away from from May, but you know he's you know he he still has some work to do, and he's come a long ways, and I'm and I'm sure all, you know, all the Carolina fans appreciate him, and everybody appreciate what he does. But the only thing we're calling out is just continue to continue to work the process, uh, and you'll be fine. Can't leave college basketball without touching on on LeVar Ball. I, I I don't understand this guy. He's pulled his um, son, Leangelo, out of school at UCLA and claims that he can get him far better ready for the NBA draft than um, the coaches at UCLA. I, I just don't understand LeVar Ball. I think he's going to end up ruining each one of his kids' careers. And, uh, you know, that's... I hate to say that, but he he's a knucklehead. He should have left his kid in school, or at least if you wanted him not to be at UCLA, let him transfer to another school. I don't see this kid getting drafted this summer. I, I really don't. Um, just – I would like to know your thoughts on that, Coach Gorn. All right, you know what? My pastor preached a, a sermon not long ago. It was called it was it was entitled "Caution Fools Ahead." You know, sometimes sometimes you see a fool, you got to avoid the fool. Yep. Now we're not Coach Gorn's and Coach Quick is not here on the show telling you to go call somebody a fool, but we're just saying caution. There are fools out there, so when you see a fool, don't participate with a fool. Um, I mean, here's my call out, Coach. And again, another, you know, you, you, you're just knocking it all out of the park tonight. And I just appreciate your your focus, your passion, and what you're bringing to the show. Um, and here's my thing. You know, you go, you you get on the plane. But first of all, you're you're in school. You get on the plane. You go overseas, and 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 you shoplift sunglasses. I don't care if it was a pack of Hubba Bubba. You know, you're not you're not in downtown Aberdeen. You're not in downtown Richmond, Virginia. You're not in Southern Pines. You're not in Carthage, North Carolina. You're in a foreign country. You know, and then whatever happens, you know, President Trump does what he does. And then, of course, he and, he and uh, Ball's dad gets into it, you know. So here's the thing. If I'm UCLA, he comes back, he's suspended. He's not playing this year. I'm, he, he's done. Because, you know, number one, you know, he, he, he you know, all three of them, they're going to now he turns around and then yanks him out of school. You know what? I'd have been the first one. If I'd have been the coach for UCLA, I'd have been the first one matching the elevator. I'd have been the second one holding the, the door open, and then I'd have ran to the curve, and whatever car they were riding in, I would have held that door open for him. Yes, you know, sir. take him and his de- dusty, raggedy game and get him out of, get him out of UCLA. And, and I'm not even impressed with his old – I'm not even impressed uh, with the kid at um, – um, the with the Lakers. I mean, because here, here's – and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on my soapbox real quick. You know, I'm, I'm in the gym Monday nights, Tuesday nights, and Thursday nights working with kids. And it's very hard to come in and do what we do when they see guys in the NBA with them side windy shots. You know, and it's just like, well, well you know, you and you working with a kid on the shot, and they go, well, they're shooting it that way. Well, you know what, he, he's, he's one out of, you know, 500 guys in the NBA, whatever the number is. But, you know, those guys, you know, they're hurting the game. And and then when you get you know get get clowns like you know Levar Ball and he's doing, you know what? Take your son out of school. If I was you know if I was the uh, if I was college coaches, I wouldn't I wouldn't want him on my team because I wouldn't want to deal with his dad. You know because you're a little you're a little too close to the program. The NBA, you know, I, you can deal with it because if he gets to that level, then it's not you know he he's he's not going to be around. He's not going to be. And I don't know. I just I just don't like where this guy's coming from. You know, he, he's too much of a distraction. Uh, so the best thing he could have done was got his school, got his son out of UCLA, uh, so now they can play some basketball. Yes, sir. Yep. I'd like to give a shout out to my guy Brendan Robinson on his birthday tonight. Favorite Tar Heel, Brendan Robinson. Happy birthday! Go work hard tonight. Get the W for the Tar Heel. <laughs> How about that? So it's his birthday is tonight. Yes, sir. That's all right. Now, now he's what is he a freshman? Yeah, no, he's a sophomore. Sophomore. 
Now, where's Kenny? Now, Kenny Smith's son is he hurt? What's what's the status on him? Well, he's he's red shirting this year. Um, okay. He transferred. He, you know, he played at Pacific. Gotcha. Last Okay, so that's why, okay, because I'm just like, because like, I'm like, now which one? Okay, so, you know, that, that's what you got to, you know, if you, you, folks, if any you got any questions that, uh, that goes on in Chapel Hill, you ain't got to worry about calling, um, don't call the basketball office, call Coach Quick, uh, and he'll uh, and he'll, he'll dial it up and uh, and get it rocking and, ro- and get it rocking and rolling. But, you know, and, and that's the thing, you know, Carolina went out on that West Coast swing, and, you know, that that's a tough trip for, for, the, young, for the young guys, all of that travel. You know, they're going away, and most of them probably the first time they've ever been away from home at Thanksgiving, and to roll out and, and not play well uh, the way they did. I mean, that's, you know, that that happens. The same thing with Duke. You know, people talking about they're undefeated. You know what? They, they are, you know, but you need, to, you need to lose so you know how to come back and win uh, and, or, or prepare to try to come back and win. So you have to be very careful with, you know, these guys going undefeated because you don't, you don't want to get in a situation where when you, you're playing where you can't lose. I've always had that philosophy. You, you got to be able to, uh, you got to be able to lose, uh, and then you got to be able to, to to put it together. Because I remember, Mike, your senior year at Union Pines, we went twenty four and six. Yes, sir. And I'll never forget. Somebody said, "What?" I said, "Man, we played we played that many games at the high school level, but we were twenty four and six. And you look and say, "Man, we." And then when I remember we we played Leftford at Union Pines and. And if I'm not mistaken, we were 100 percent from the we shot 100 percent from the free throw line. Yes, sir. And Kevin Brooks had most of those. I mean, we and I, I don't know why I, I, my mind shifted over to shifted over to that, but uh, it did. But just um, you know, when when those young guys go to college, it, it's tough, man, to play that many games. Because think about it. I mean, most of those high school kids are just used to you know playing in the game, getting in the car, riding the bus, you know, maybe an hour. Get off, go play the game, and, and 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 do the process to get home. But now they're packing the bag, they're flying all across the country, and you know, thousands of thousand miles, sleeping in hotels. I mean, that's that is definitely a grind, without a shadow of a doubt. Yes, sir. Yeah. If you want to move right along to the NBA, talk a little bit of NBA before we close the show. Man, you know we got to talk about that. You know that because I got, I got. Go ahead, go ahead. You got, you got it, man. We on the road. Let's roll. thing you know LeBron James is LeBron James only call out I got is man that block he had the other night I think they were playing in Atlanta yes, sir. man they got one up man that guy was like I mean he blocked this guy's shot just like he come from out of the out of you know it was like he come from the backboard down not like he jumped and blocked it it was like he was up on the backboard and threw the ball down yeah I mean and that's the thing I mean he, it's a new new squad he, they, they have to get used to playing without the kid they got to get used to the, you know, the, the everything. I mean, it's just like I'm going to call Chauncey Billups and how he called out, uh, um, gosh, was, uh, Paul Pierce when he said, you know, you don't win an NBA championship in the first month. You know, the Cavs will be, the Cavs will be fine. Bottom line, the Cavs will be in the NBA finals, hands down. And then let me, you know what, I, I was talking to, I was talking to my buddy Vic today when I was on the way in from the office. I don't know, you know, Kevin Durant and, and this gangster role he's playing the other night with the technical fouls and 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 then Draymond Green, you know, yeah, I, I just I, I don't know, you know what, I can't understand these guys. You know, it's just like why are you why are you acting the way you're acting? I mean, Draymond Green gets called whatever happens, he's just gonna get up and he's just gonna walk all up in the on the official. And then um, what uh, KD was doing to uh, you know Boogie, and I'm just like, you know, why you, what's all that about? You know, just just play the game. And then Steve Kerr was talking about. It. He said, "You know, we just got to be able to control our emotions." I mean, you are the champs. I mean, you're supposed to be acting a certain way, and you're not. 
Uh, and again, that's not about there. You know, they they can't you know they can't be on the edge, and I'm not saying that. But it seems like I never seen Kevin Durant do this when he was in OKC. You know, never right. saw him never saw him do this when he was you know even before um, when he was with the Supersonics and then went to uh, Oklahoma City. And now he's out there, and then now it's all of a sudden he's got to he's got to have this persona. He's got to be you know what, KD, I'm gonna call you out there. You know, clean it up. You know, clean it up because it is definitely not within your character. Uh, that you're doing so you know clean it up play the game uh you're a tremendous talent not taking anywhere away from your skill set i'm just asking you uh to focus on what you need to do and that's the that's the thing that you know these guys that sometimes they lose sight of uh and then draymond green you know he thinks he's the man he won't impress me trade him to phoenix you know trade him trade him to phoenix and then see if he's an all-star yeah and, uh, you know, and just like you said, piggybacking off the Kevin Durant thing, it's been, what, three ejections in, like, the last 18 games? That's, that's definitely out of his character. Oh, yeah, it's pathetic. I mean, it's just like, really? I mean, I don't, I mean, you don't turn on, just like, what was the last, the last game I watched them play was uh, Oak, Oklahoma City and uh, Golden State. And, of course, they went OKC. Uh, and, of course, you know, it was going to be chippy, and, and they got in, and Westbrook is going to bring it every day. Uh, even though I, 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 you know, I'm not a, I appreciate his game. I appreciate his hustle. I just, I just underestimate his decision making skills, and they've got to work that out between he and Melo and Paul George. Um, but uh, enough of that one. But my thing is, you know, those guys come in. You know, you, you can't blow a quick whistle, but you can't let people get away with, you know, with with the crazy stuff. But uh, I think just think Golden State needs to kind of take a step back. Uh, you know, you know, Steve Carr. He needs he needs to reel him in a tad. Uh, and just ask those guys just to focus in on what they need to do. Uh, Boston's playing well. Uh, the Sixers are playing well. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of young talent. Uh, I see, um, you know, same thing with the Bucks. And one of the most exciting teams is, is the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, and same thing with um, the Washington Wizards. I almost call them the Bullets. You know, John Wong. So, the, you know, the NBA is doing quite well uh, talent-wise. My Clippers, you know, Blake's out. I mean, they're in shambles. I mean, they were talking about, you know, did, should they trade DeAndre Joy? I mean, you know what? I, I wouldn't have never brought him back in the first place. And a dude can't shoot a free throw. If he if he ain't dunking, he ain't going to do nothing for you. Uh, so, you know, and now, uh, you know, the Clippers, you know, Doc Rivers is, he's better than that. I'm not saying he's, you know, they, they're going to hold the coach accountable, but that is, you know, Doc's got, he's got to get the shit right. And because he's, right. he's too talented a coach to, to have all of those issues. And, of course, you can't control it when players get hurt. Uh, but the league, I think, is is definitely heading in the right direction uh, as it relates to you know the, the talent. But uh, these guys that are coming out and these one and dones, uh, and I just want the guys that are still in school to really take a hard look at that because just like you had, uh, who's the num- the number one player picked last year was who? Um, um, Lonzo Ball. All right, then you had uh, the kid from Duke. Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Markel Fultz was the uh, number one pick. Okay, and then. Uh, from out of Washington, um, Lonzo Ball was number two, and then uh, Tatum, the kid from Duke, was number three. Right, all right. So that it's a great call. So, so there was three guys that came out, and then you had to turn around this year, and you're going to have Bagley come out. You know, and you got to realize, I mean, it's such a it's such a quantum leap. You know, from the from high school to college to the NBA, and you guys that leave early. You know, it, it, just like uh, you got it left Carolina, uh, Bradley. I don't know where – I mean, you got any insight on him? Uh, he's Right now he's currently in the developmental – in the G League. Um, he's had two big-time big, big time ball games over the last two games. First time, I think he had a total of 28 points, and the second game he's had 24. But up until then, he was buried on the Utah Jazz's bench. Um, I'd love to have him in Chapel Hill right now because I think it would make us a definite favorite to repeat his champs. But – you know, oh sure, sure, and that's what I'm. I don't think I'm saying. I just want these guys to be able to get in the NBA, and enjoy that time, and don't be in the NBA and be in in the league three years, and then and we're trying to figure out where where they're going. But no, you're exactly right. I mean, it's a decision they got to make that decision. Uh, but I just would just like them to be able to to be a better all around player before going up, and then all of a sudden become a a, a whole instrument. Or you got to put a whole a whole body of work involved. Yeah, or not in the league. Period. Excuse me. Man, I've got a tickle in my throat. Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. And I, I got to just say something about that. Go ahead, go ahead. San Antonio Spurs organization, um, 
I tell you, man, Greg Popovich, what he's doing. I'm, the organization is class and it's just professionalism. To still have that team in the top three of the Western Conference, and you hadn't had Tony Parker but a few games this season maybe, and haven't had Kawhi Leonard all year, your best player, the all-star. I, to still be a top three team in the Western Conference, wow, that's big time. Um, hopefully getting Kawhi back soon, maybe around uh, January, but um, get him back and they just continue to roll. Just a top flight organization of, um, with um, a whole ton of professionalism. You know what, and that's what, uh, that's what makes Pop, uh, you know, and that's the thing, you know, you, you look at, you know, it's not about who starts, it's about who's uh, able to slide in. You, you Just like you say, you got Patty Mills and you got the rest of the, the cast and crew uh, that's stepping up and, and making it pop. So I appreciate you recognizing uh, what those guys are getting done down in uh, the, uh, the Lone Star State. Yes, sir. All right. Um, I guess coming up with our closing comments, all right, man. I'll uh, I have the closing comments, and I let then I let you close us out today. So again, first of all, uh, okay. go ahead. Well, okay, uh, okay, that's fine. All right, <laughs> good. Hey, we're all good, man. So uh, it, ain't, it ain't nothing that you can't handle. So kind of putting Coach Quick on the spot here tonight. But uh, first of all, I want to appreciate Coach Quick for another great, uh, great broadcast, great podcast. Uh, he just, you know, again, Coach has been on the grind and. This time of year, my schedule is really hectic with um, with my day to day, and then of course basketball. So I was like, really, you know, I was sitting there at work, and it was like getting late, and I was just like, man, today's Wednesday, we supposed to get a show, and then, you know, I hit Coach Quick up, and he was like, man, he had some stuff popping. So I said, you know what, give me get, let me get home, shut it down for about uh, forty minutes, and I'll be able to to bounce back. But once you sit behind the mic and get that get the uh, get that music flowing and Coach Quick gets on there, we're able to be able to pull us off. But most importantly, uh in my closing comments, I appreciate you, Mike, uh for uh giving us a shout out uh for Coach Capel. Uh as and and you know we did a I did a show a couple of weeks in, in honor of him and again uh it, it's been tough. It's still day to day uh because he's just uh, he's done so much for me. Uh, as a as a person, as I tell people, I couldn't I couldn't score twenty five in the closet by myself, and I couldn't throw it in the ocean if my if my toes were you know stuck in the sand. But he believed in me and he saw something in me, uh, and he allowed me to be a part of something special. Uh, so you know, appreciate Mike you know, bringing that out, uh, and I know the guys uh, uh, continue to, to push forward. I, I'm staying in weekly contact with uh, Jerry, uh, coach's wife, just to make sure that you know she's great. Uh, but the outpouring at the uh, at the service was just tremendous. Saw, saw so many guys. Uh, but you know, again, just ask everybody just to keep us up, you know, uplifted uh, as we go through this because it's not going to be easy, especially as we start to close in on the holidays. It'll be their first Christmas without their dad. So uh, you know that that's the tough thing. But it's guys like Coach Quick that it makes us you know continue to push forward. It's guys like Coach Capel that. Uh, that are looking down and saying, no, you know, you you, you got to push the envelope. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. But again, great, great show, Mike, and I appreciate uh, appreciate you taking the leadership on tonight's broadcast. And it's uh, so special uh, to be able to do this. We say each week. So, folks, we just want to make sure that you continue to support us as we continue to expand the globe. And as we said at the opening, that we are now in the Ghana, Africa. Uh, so we just appreciate your continued support on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, as well as uh, Podbean, Facebook, YouTube, so wherever you can check us out, check us out. But Coach Quick, I'm going to toss it over to you for you to close us down. Thank you so much, my friend. Yes, sir. Um, and as, as we close out, I'd just like to give a shout out to Zamir White of Scotland County Senior High School in Longburg, North Carolina, um, as, he, as he's been named the National High School Player of the Year um, for um, 2017. He'll be attending the university. Of Georgia's um, next season on football scholarship, and um, and the kid tore his ACL a couple of weeks ago. But it's him and his teammates, they're playing for the state championship this weekend in Winston Salem, North Carolina, against um, Harding University um, uh, varsity football team. Um, uh, Demir in Scotland, they're twelve and one. Harding University is thirteen and one. So it should be a great um, state championship game. Yeah. So as Coach Quick calls out the. Uh top player out of Scotland County. We certainly wish 
uh, them continued success. I know I got a couple of, uh, I got a friend that Suns plays on there, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Reggie Williams' Suns play on the Scotland High School team. So best of luck. So again, as we close out, uh, don't forget our scripture verse, John 14 and 6. I am the way, the truth, and the light. So for Coach Quick, the best co-host uh, this side of heaven and uh, your host, Coach Goins, as we always say, uh, somebody somewhere is working on the game, and we'll see you in the game.